I built this talk and it's called Securing the Data Center with IoT. I don't want you to get confused. I know we heard a lot of startup, startup pitches last night, technical previews, things that people are going to go out and use in the real world. This could be used in the real world um, and it uses off-the-shelf hardware to build something with Docker and Raspberry Pi. But really the reason I built this was as a hack um, as part of a contest to get to DockerCon. And you'll see in the other slides that it's kind of got DockerCon branding on it, um, apart from this one. I do work at ADP. I'm a principal developer. I've been there eight years. But I'm also a Docker captain. And that's probably what um, got me involved in this journey. So I was on my way to DockerCon to Seattle. And I needed a story. I needed something to kind of connect this together to link it. And um, there was a really good quote earlier. I think I'll attribute it to Ben. Everything old is new again. And there's, um, there's, a, there's a quote behind this from an economist of the New York Times or New York University. Um, he says, real sustainable growth does not stem from new resources, but from existing ones rearranged to make them more valuable. And how true is that of Docker and containers? Let's get our slide notes up here. Um, so how long were we sending images over email and being OK with that before Snapchat came along? How long were we playing with Beowulf clusters before Kubernetes and Swarm mode came along? How long were we happy with GH root until containers took? flight. Um, so this is the agenda. I'm going to talk a little bit about why I built the hack, um, what I think IoT is. And I'm going to give you a real demo of this hardware here. We've actually got seven Raspberry Pis. They're all Pi Zeros, and they cost $5 each. Um, I don't know if anyone's had a hard time getting them. One person, um, Pimeroni, stocked them. Um, there's a lot of stock now, but I think when they were first released, there was a lot of outroar and Hacker News. People couldn't get them, and they were really upset. Um, Pimroni helped me out a bit with this hack. IoT, all the things. So I think IoT is anything that has an IP address that's addressable. And if I think back, the first thing that I remember having an IP address was at school. It was a network printer, and I was fascinated that it wasn't connected to a computer. I could literally type in the IP address and send the job to it, and it just worked. We even had a digital camera that didn't have a memory card, so you take your pictures and bring it back and plug it in. Um, these days, we're looking at baby monitors. Again, if you read Hacker News, you'll see they're being hacked and published on the internet. Um, so there's good and bad. We've got light bulbs. Yesterday, I stayed at a really funky hotel in Shoreditch. And, um, you could basically pick the color of the lights in the room. You could turn up the blinds up and down just by using an iPad. So IoT is coming, whether we like it or not. And we need to understand it. There are some inane uses of IoT. In the hotel at DockerCon, I saw a TV advert, very American. It said, um, the guy's in the shops. He's looking at the eggs, and he rings home, hey, honey. Have we got any eggs? And she said, no, I'm too busy. I'm dealing with the kids. Can you check the webcam? And so he opens the app for the fridge, and he has a look. So um, hopefully this is a bit more useful for you than that. Again, smartwatches just coming to London. I'm way over my goal. I think 50,000 steps today is ridiculous. Um, I remember when pedometers came out. You got them on, on a magazine. They cost about three, four pounds, and nobody used them. Um, now we're using big data to give insights. Um, mine told me last Friday, what's up with you? You're not walking as much as you normally do on a Friday. This is what I've been doing with Docker over the last sort of 12 months. And if you've played the Xbox, you see that pop up achievement unlocked. These are some of the achievements I unlocked. Um, the first one, as you know, you build gradually, was to build a Raspberry Pi cluster with 28 CPUs. And it, was, it wasn't easy. It involved rebuilding the code, the Go code, on the Pi. 
there weren't packages available at the time. And I had been pointed in the direction of Arc Linux. It's a bit similar to Manjaro. Um, and so I had to learn a different package manage management tool as well. Um, but it had some benefits. It's got AUFS, which is quite fast. Second thing I did was get in touch with Linux User and Developer Magazine. And if you look over there, you see the tutorial I wrote, which was published. And unfortunately, I had to give all the instructions of downloading Docker 1.10, um, I think 1.6, to build 1.10, to deploy it and build Swarm. Nowadays, you can just install it with a one, one command, which is so much different. So I've been through the pain. Uh, it's a, a love, labor of love. Um, and then it got harder than that because I wanted to run software on there. I wanted to create a load balancer and try and see if I could performance test it. I had to rebuild every ARM image from scratch. Um, we talked earlier about a Python base image. Do you remember that in the layers? With any ARM image at the moment, you have to start from a different base. So you've got to roll your own. Um, and I'll show you that later. Third achievement um, up to DockerCon was becoming a Docker captain. And so I released some training material, hands-on Docker Labs. Check it out on my blog. I ran it at work a few times, took it out into community, and I joined Twitter in March. If you're not on Twitter, I'd recommend it. Docker saw it, and they said, hey, would you like to join our program? I said yes. And my blog went from 10,000 hits per year to over 14,000 per month. Um, so it's really cool to be a Docker captain. Um, Nicholas is here as well. Met up with Elton, and um, I think Benjamin Wooten was around. So what motivated me to build this hack? You might be wondering, OK. Um, DockerCon had a contest. And as you can see, it's a really cool event. It's very flashy. There were 4,000 attendees, and it was held in Seattle. And if you were to build out a cool hack and submit it, you could potentially get all of your travel covered. So um, I don't know about you, but that sounds like a brilliant offer. I thought, yep, yeah, I know what I'll do. I'll use a Raspberry Pi and Docker because I know this. And I won't just build a service and load balance it. What I'll do is I'll put some lights in there. Because lights are flashy. Everyone likes lights. Um, so I picked up the $5 version um, over the Pi 3. One of the main reasons was it was new. It was flashy. Um, and it also gave you some neat constraints. It's a bit like a small instance of a cloud service. You've got 512 meg of RAM, a gig processor. And this was attempt number one. So can you guess what it is? It's a load balancer at the bottom. And then four different web servers. Um, you could use something like traffic, perhaps. I ended up using Nginx. Um, the source code is available on my blog. And it, it was pretty cool. It worked. So every time you ping the load balancer at the bottom, each one of the um, workers would light up and bling. And then you could increase the concurrency level to the point where the lights were all on at the same time. And I was really proud of it. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to enter this. It became the most popular media tweet for Docker as a whole in, um, in May. And another tweet about this became the most popular one in June, um, which is really cool. So I thought things were going well. And then I got this tweet. Um, Solomon is the CTO of Docker, and I'd never spoken to him. I just started out as a captain. I didn't really know anyone. And so to get this kind of message, I thought, you know, hashtag winning. Then Pimroni, who built out some of this hardware and they built cases, they got in touch and they run an internet TV show. They said, come to the bilge tank. We'd love to have you come and talk about Docker. We'd love to have a Docker captain. And uh, they just wanted to say hi. I couldn't get them to do a new one for you, but you can see they're a fun bunch of guys. If you've not watched their program, you, you're very geeky. You like Raspberry Pis. You like technology, electronics. Get in touch with them. So I spoke to Docker, and I was like, hey, look at this. Solomon loves it. Can I go to Seattle now? Um, and they said, no. We've seen it before. 
it's just LEDs, it's not very impressive. Um, and I thought, really? So we went back to the drawing board and we decided to build something new. Um, this time, Pimeroni backed it and they said, OK, um, we've got this environmental sensor. It can measure temperature, light, and color. What do you think? I said, yeah, sounds good. And they said, we don't want you using that little generic LED board. We want to make a brand new one for you. And this was about two weeks until I was to go. And they produced the board. They sent off the design, all free of cost. And I was sitting at home on the Friday. I'd taken the day off work, waiting for a UPS delivery. And I checked the tracking number, and it said 48-hour delivery. I wasn't going to be at home on Monday, which meant the kit was going to come on Tuesday. I was going to fly on Thursday. So you can imagine how stressed I was. A little bit like when my MacBook wasn't working earlier with the USB-C connection. Um, but I managed to turn it around, and you can see it in front of you there. We've got three different devices that you need to, um, to look at. We've got what's called a unicorn hat here, which is an LED matrix, it's RGB. And then a single row of pixels here called the blinked. And then built on top of them is the Envirofat sensor. I've got four of them for a bit of redundancy. Um, and this is the kind of software I've used. So if you've worked with the Raspberry Pi, you know Python is a default library. You know that manufacturers provide their libraries in Python. I didn't really fancy rewriting it all. Um, so I put together some code, tested it out on one board. It worked fine. I then thought, well, I need some kind of mechanism that's going to be real time, that's got pub sub, and means that I don't have to learn something hard. So I picked Redis, and um, it works great. Again, I needed a way of scaling out. At the time, I had been put onto classical Docker Swarm. Um, just like Ben said, it's imperative. Um, the reason I'm using that is because it allows me to run unprivileged containers, or rather privileged containers, so I can access the GPIO pins. Um, might scare you, and if you've got any suggestions for getting around that, I'd love um, you to come and speak to me later. So we've got Python running a Docker container on each of the Pies. These guys all run the same container, so we can scale it up, and the dashboard runs a separate container. Uh, we've got Redis recompiled for ARM. Do you remember I said the base image has to come from uh, an ARM image? And Compose, because Compose is great. This is what it looks like. Um, you want a technical overview. We connect the Mac to the manager. We do a Docker host equals and bring it up. At that point, the manager will find um, all the sensors. It will find the LED dashboard, and it will create a, um, a web dashboard and place it on one of these units here that doesn't have a screen. Once they're up and running, they'll all talk to each other in a swarm overlay network. So that's the other thing about Compose. It makes it really easy. And then because it's a swarm, you want scale. So we type in Docker Compose Scale Sensor 4. All the other four will come online. They'll start to register into Redis. And it looks a bit like this. So we're recording uh, key value pairs and then a hash set. The hash set's got all the members. They use the container ID as the name. Um, we're recording the temperature, the baseline temperature, the, um, and how much motion there is. We're also expiring those keys. So if one of the sensors sets its temperature value every 30 seconds or every five seconds, and then it doesn't set it, it will expire. And the key's gone, and it will drop off. Um, let's go over to a demo. And hopefully there'll be no flames. Can we get into a terminal? This is not actually my computer. We had to do a, a switch at the last minute. And I'm logged, actually logged into the manager at the moment. I would normally log in to use this straight from the laptop. You can't actually see that. Uh, let me get over that. Big enough? Yep. 
So let's do a Docker info. Uh, if we spell it right. What's the <laughs> info? Yay. So how many CPUs have we got? I can't see that. Six, OK. Everyone's listening. That's great. Oh, no, that's not going to work. When you run Docker Compose on the Raspberry Pi, it's very slow if you're pointing at it. Normally, I run it on my laptop. It's very fast. But we can see the containers that I got earlier. There's also going to be a network that was created. And all I'm going to do for time is just restart the containers that are already out there. They're already placed. And just keep watching. You should see like a boot up sequence on one of these. It could be any one of them. So we've created Redis. That will be sitting over here. It's pinned to a sensor that doesn't have anything on it. The unicorn is the unicorn hat. And we've got a line there. And Nicholas, can you come up, please? Need a fellow Docker captain here. So what I'd like you to do is um, just move the board a little bit. Pick him up and just move it a little bit. The one with the lights on. Yeah. So this is bolted in your server rack, and somebody's pulling out cables and they're patching in their laptop to hack you. Right, They're moving it about because they're doing unscheduled maintenance. We don't want them in there. And this is sitting in the um, DevOps room. And as soon as you move it, it's real time. Redis is sending out a message on its channel. We're pulling the sensors. We're getting the data back. Now, there is a web front end for this as well, which originally I did at DockerCon as a static page. Why am I typing in Docker Compose PS? Because I've created a port binding for the web server, but I don't know what it is because it's, I've used a dynamic binding. So we want 32. Someone remember 776. And going to work. What do we think? Do you know what this chart is, this plugin? Does someone know? Smoothie charts? not used it. I just discovered it about a week ago. It's really cool. And what we're getting is a temperature. So if we go over to that device again, we just touch it. We can simulate a thermal overload. And you see that graph going crazy? We let go. But one device isn't very useful. It's not really. We're taking advantage of Swarm because we're using an overlay network. All the containers are talking together. They're being placed automatically. We check out that Docker Compose file. You're going to see I've added some constraints there. But let's, uh, let's scale it up. Let's go all the way up. Like I say, this runs so much quicker from your Mac. As each one gets created, you'll see it go through its boot up sequence, um, like a splash screen, if you like, just to show you that it's working. And now we've got four lines over there. Yeah. We've got all of the temperatures coming through on the graph and got some color. So let's fire those guys up. Let's get them all red. Get them all really warm. Like I said, I've got cold fingers. But one of the neat things is you can actually see the graph going up and resizing dynamically. And this will just keep running. I left it um, on at my house, and I came home in the evening. And the amount of light you've got generated off that is Massive, it just lit up the whole room. So um, normally I would have stopped there, but when you're a Docker captain, it never stops. 
And if you're in this Docker community, if you're connected with containers, um, as many of you are, and I've heard some really clever stuff today, I'm definitely going to be going back home and, and looking into some of these things. Um, you get to go to DockerCon if you're a Docker captain. Um, it's great. You've got the Space Needle in Seattle, really um, good party. I went for early registration, just along with everyone else. So I had 4,000 people for early registration. Um, I can go for late registration next time. And it, obviously, it's the home of coffee. I came home and I kept learning. Actually, this is something that I saw at DockerCon, and I know there's a, there's a young man here from Influx, or he works with Influx. Um, it's such a cool tool. I was just mulling about in the technical area, in the, in the expo area, and I saw this graph. I was like, I, I build graphs like this by hand. Why? Why am I not using this tool? I said, what is it? And they go, it's Grafana, of course. And I, was, I thought, I've never heard of that. So I went home. I use these sensors, and I've got three of them running in my house. They've been there for about three months, and they've recorded all of this data. Um, and obviously, you can get insights on it. It's really cool. Um, and it could easily be extended over this as well. Kept on hacking. Um, I don't know whether Docker might be saying, but the August tweet was the most popular media tweet for the whole of Docker. They got the most popular mention and the most popular tweet all on stuff about Docker on Raspberry Pi. Um, so it's really kind of trendy at the moment. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see what was the original swarm before I broke it out. And the right-hand side, you've got what, something called OTG networking. Anyone know what that is? So what it means is that you effectively have an umbilical cord from a, a host. It takes data and power to run the entire system. Um, and the Raspberry Pi Foundation actually put this onto their homepage, um, I think, last week. And it was a real honor to be on there, been working with the Raspberry Pi for so long, and Docker. So um, it, it's always been, in my eyes, a perfect fit to bring those two communities together. And I asked the evangelist, you know, why did you do this? Like, you didn't even get in touch with me. How did you find out? Um, and he said he was reading the commit messages of Docker Docker. So um, make sure you do good commit messages because you never know who's reading them and what might happen. Raspberry Pi can now be installed. Docker can be installed with one command. You get Raspberry in the default operating system. You can just do a curl sh, and you've got Docker. Um, I worked with the Docker team to test Swarm mode on Raspbian. There were a few issues originally around um, VXLAN, the kernel module, wasn't included. It's now included if you update your Raspberry Pi. And then the Docker captains, again, they're always full of fun ideas. They said, let's create a huge swarm of Raspberry Pis in all our houses. And we did three. Um, I've got a video of that if you're interested. Raspberry Pis have just sold 10 million units. Um, and they originally expected to sell, what, 10,000 in earnest. They said that. So um, don't underestimate your idea. Thank you very much.